hi guys welcome back to my channel <laughs> chi money gang i'm back yes today is the first time seeing my face welcome join the gang immediately by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing because today we are going to talk about something very 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 important and that is 10 things that you must fight today tomorrow next week so that it does not impede or prevent you from getting wealthy yes then these are 10 things that the average rich or wealthy people have dealt with and i'm bringing the secrets to you because of course you're a member of the gang what are we here for what to make the money and to keep the bag okay so i'm going to go straight into those things and i'm going to explain these things better to you using some of my experiences and the things that happen all around me okay now you know how we do it so let's go so number one <laughs> this is very critical all of these things when i was writing them down researching them i was just like oh my god i need to come to the gang to you know report myself more of less Sh share with you guys this secret because some of them really really hit home number one work-life balance and all of those struggles you know how people are like, okay, I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a wife, I'm a director in a company. Uh, you know, all of those hats that we wear and then we try to balance them. We are struggling each time when we give so much time to our work. We are feeling bad about not giving so much time for our children. All of those struggles, it stops productivity because, I mean, you can be at work. But your mind is really at home you can be at home and you're feeling like okay you're not putting in so much at work and you might risk losing your job or your business either way and those struggles are not good you know what the rich does they prioritize you don't try to balance these things because when you try to it can't really balance because you're just one person right so there are certain things you have to put in place to make sure that each of them are given attention as much as you can and you know so things like delegation will come into place and all of that so you need to prioritize at every time to make sure that it works right so those struggles have kept a lot of people at a place where after training children for instance they come to their mid-age or late age and then they discover that oh my god what have we been doing and, you know how have we grown apart if it's maybe a couple you know and all of that and how this affects wealth you keep feeling like okay i need to manage all of my business i need to be present there and it, every time you can't be present there things are not working you know so you must have to balance by prioritizing by making sure that your business have the right things it needs to survive without you right and all of those procrastination and not managing time this one is a killer i mean Sometimes I used to feel like um, there is just something about human behavior that makes us just want to put off things and say, okay, I'm going to do it later and all of that because I see a lot of people struggle with procrastination, including myself, right? And, you know, I mean, I've gotten better over the years, but it used to be like, I used to be like a chronic procrastinator and there is no way if you want to invest, you want to you know start a new business, you want to invest in a new venture, you're procrastinating, you're going to lose out on the you know, on the um, on the opportunity um, period or the gap of the opportunity that has presented itself because you're not able to turn in your application on time. You're not, you are not able to apply for the loan when you are asked to bring the form or something and it will always pass you by. So you can't allow procrastination to keep keeping you away from your goals, right? Procrastination and not managing time is something you need to kill. It's like village people. These 10 things I'm telling you actually, you know, if you're from my part of the world, is like village people. Don't let them win, guys. Don't let them win. And I'm serious. Okay. Now, the third thing that I've discovered that the wealthy rich have been able to deal with is perfectionism. You know, <laughs> I'm sure you know one or two people because I'm not like that. Like, praise God, somehow I... Maybe by my personality, I just don't think that I should sit on one thing and try to make it better before I get it out there. Instead, I'm the opposite person. I am an idea and do person. So you know these people who want to make sure that, oh, this idea is better. They keep consulting, keep writing, keep adding, keep changing the design, keep... Ah, in their head, they're like, ah, this can be better. Because even when they send it out, they keep judging themselves. They keep judging themselves. One of them is in the room here listening to me. Like, they keep judging themselves like it's not good. Yes, I battle sometimes with, you know, after making a speech, after speaking, after doing something, I feel like, oh, I should have added one or two things. That's different. But these people just don't believe in their idea enough to launch it. Because they keep saying, oh, somebody else is doing something like this. I think I should change it. I think, oh my God, nobody wants to buy perfect. They don't get it. 
So people want to buy a solution. Solutions, why do you think that, you know, for instance, iPhone keep getting, you know, a different um, upgrade every time? Excuse me, if they, want, if they wanted to get to iPhone 14 brand by 2010, would they have started the first phone? Do you understand? Things have upgrade, and of course, you have to make money continuously, right? Now, Africa's richest man did not wait until he could start all of the products which he's manufacturing now before he could start, right? He started by doing it like, you know, buying stuff off in Kano State, doing things, and then he entered into production. So, let me not talk too much. You know what I'm talking about? Get that thing out there. Some people yeah, who are even on this table, do you know where they are? They are still at the point where they are hiding the idea where they wrote it in their head. I don't want anybody to steal my idea. Excuse me. Please, the rich. And if you want to be rich, you can't be stuck there. Okay. Number four, right? Yes. The number four is avoiding financial responsibilities. Now, this one is something that I have struggled with almost all my life. Like, I still struggle with most of them. What do I mean by financial responsibilities you know that the same way you wake up in your home there's certain things you must do like nobody's going to do it for you right if you don't do it it's not going to be done but you leave it undone every time and keep giving yourself excuses when it comes to your finance things like planning your finance you know how much you're expecting or you or you are or you make you know how what and what should go into let's say food clothing emergency all of that but you keep planning without following through with your plan. You know what I mean? The other one, budgeting. How do you know how much you should spend and how much you should? At what point should you say, no, by this time, the budget for um, eating out, for instance, because I'm kind of a sweet tooth. The budget for eating out is exhausted. So we're not going to touch the money, um, any money again. I mean, the money is not even there. So the money budgeted for eating out is already exhausted. So until it, there's a new supply, no way, okay? Budgeting is so key. At what point do you know that you need to pay off some debts or we shouldn't even get into certain debts at all? Do you understand what I mean? Those financial responsibilities, nobody will take it for you. When you see a good opportunity for investment, nobody will tell you, oh, invest, invest, invest now. You know already that you should invest. So what are you waiting for? You are looking for an excuse. And SQs are very cheap. They are always at your door. They are always smiling at you, waiting for you to pick them as usual or do what you should do. Number five. Oh God, the real village people. So this one is about family or societal, family or like cultural conditioning. Let me put it like that. So the way the people from your family think about money, the way people from your tribe, from your race, from your, the people you watch growing up, the things you saw going up when it comes to money and wealth, they kind of shaped you and how you think about money. Some people grew up like me in a very, very rigid religious background where money was, you know, made to look like it was a devil itself. So you grow up having a relationship with money in a way that seems, oh, if it's big money, I don't want money to make me lose my dedicatedness to God. You know, that kind of thing. And these things are subconscious. They will not come to you and say, Oh my God, I've been lost you. You can't be wealthy because I've made you think of money as bad. No. You just discover that when there's an opportunity and someone is saying, Oh, this is a good idea. Good, a good idea. You think about it. The next thing you think about is, Oh my, I mean, we don't need all this money in heaven. You know, what is all of this? It's too good to be true. You know, is it this easy? No, money can't be this easy to, you know, those things will start playing like record in your head. And before you know what's happening, you're not going to invest. Some years down the line, you're going to see some of your friends who invested and how they have moved on. You even convince yourself that mm, they're not as spiritual as you, that they are just busy making money. You know what I mean? That's just an example. For some people, they have certain, you know, sometimes you ask people like, what is billion in your first language? You don't know what it is. So how are you going to dream about billions? How are you going to make plans that get, get into billions? How are you going to become a billionaire? Do you understand? So what you don't feel you deserve or know about, there's no way you're going to get it, right? So the wealthy rich, they have removed themselves from limiting ideas about money. They have seen money as a tool for power, for influence, for humanitarian. Why do you think everybody who is rich has a foundation of sorts? We're going to get there in another video. I'll tell you the role that being a philanthropist or a humanitarian plays 
in being wealthy, right? So this is very important. Think about your relationship with money. Do you look at money as your cheating girlfriend? Something, something very suspicious. When money comes up, you move yourself somehow and feel like this is too good to be true or this can lead me astray or these people want to chop my money. Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. Now, this next one is something that we need to cop. Financial impulsive control. Not being able to control your impulse to spend. So, you know you want to save. You know you want to invest. You know you, have, you want to budget. But then all of a sudden, you see that shoe. You know, if you're some, some people that love that have a weakness for shoes, then your mind just tells you just buy this one more and then you can always augment it with the other income coming girlfriend you're deceiving yourself and we know you know me and you we know right so being impulsive in buying you didn't plant something but you see it and then you decide let me buy it i'm talking to myself too you as i'm talking to you you know please we need to drop it like it's hot drop it like it's hot right see it's not helping us it's not going to help you and if we're going to deal with this we need to start right now by making plans dedicating what we need don't buy what you just want Yes, I'm not saying don't indulge sometimes. Make sure that you have a budget for that indulgence. You know what I mean? So that your overall income can cater for what it is that you are aspiring to save and invest and become wealthy. Right? Remember, in this journey to becoming wealthy, you actually have a time frame. So you have like five years, ten years, you're looking out to, to hit a money goal where you can now become the billionaire or the millionaire. So you can allow these things today to stop you from getting there. You know what I mean? next one that the rich have dealt with is low self-esteem and low self-confidence i battled with this one if you know me if you know my story just reading about you know i started making money or thinking about making money in a way into my 30s that's crazy that is crazy <laughs> now because of that, I struggled a lot with pricing myself. So I used to be a blogger. People ask me, so how much is your sponsored post? I'm the one that will look at, okay, I think you should pay what you want. <laughs> now, I am a badass, you know, even if I say so myself, badass book editor. And people ask me, so how much are you charging? And I'm like, mm, I don't know, pay maybe 15 naira a page and then let's calculate it. Crazy. That is how I got to do a 600 and something page uh, work sometime in 2009, 2010. And I was paid only 21,000 naira. Guys, that in dollars is less than $20. And your girl here that time was even happy because in my head, I'm like, she even valued me. She really loved my work. In fact, she, excuse me. That self-confidence will lead you to feeling bad about yourself and feeling even less as day goes by. Did I even tell you that it was sometime in 2013 that a client of mine, Ebuka, Ebuka Nichebe, if you're watching this video, shout out to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I edited his book, went ahead to get him other resources to publish and all of that. And he told me, he invited me to his office after the work was done. I know we had lunch now. Then he took me on what was a crash course on pricing. He said, I think I underpaid you. Because look at it. Look at the time frame it took us. I kept going, going back and forth. Sometimes I was the one delaying. You were waiting on me. That's operational cost. You should have factored it into your cost. And he should have paid because he's a business person. Oh, Ibuka told me how to prioritize my businesses. And if there are some that are not going to pay me well because people don't price it well, I should put it low, low, low in the radar of my services. And he even taught me at that, at that time that if I want to stop selling certain services because people don't really appreciate it enough to pay for it, I should make it really high. Make the price really high so they, they will just go. Do you know what I mean? So that anyone who finally pays a high price, I will put in my best and I'll give my best away. I mean, I'm giving you guys all my juice. But you know, that was what began to cure my low self-esteem, right? So don't let that be you. The wealthy rich are not in that trap. They know exactly what they are worth and they go ahead to demand it time after time. So the next one is money trauma. Mm -hmm. You think that trauma is only from other abuses. Money has abused you sometimes. And that's why you look at it the way you look at it. Because you lost money sometime in maybe Ponzi scheme or, you know, you had a major family crisis. Maybe um, you guys lost the, um, goods in the market because it went up in flames or something really, really crazy. 
because all of that happened, you now associate money with some sort of fear. So you just have this intrinsic fear that I don't want to spend, I don't want to invest, they might be scam, they might do this. Is making you poor, right? Yes, I'm not saying don't be careful, but look at it. Your response to investing and planning and budgeting, is it informed by trauma that you already have from past money experiences? Think about it. The rich don't have this trauma. In fact, they take big risk and cash out big for a reason. Think about it and let this trauma be dealt with right now. Like if you need help, you know where to come. Let me know. Send me a DM on Instagram, Chisomaka, and we can take it from there, right? Okay. Second to last, which is like the ninth one, if I'm correct. Yeah. Fear of failure. So because you don't even want to fail, you don't want this investment to fail, you don't even start it at all. You know what I mean? You are so afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Anything you do, you are not used to. Anything you've not, you know, that is not the kind of thing you're used to. You don't want to join. You don't want to join the opportunity. You don't want to go for that job interview because you're not used to look at You don't know anybody in your industry who is in oil and gas. So when an oil and gas opportunity comes, you just see yourself somehow not applying, not going. Fear is a rubber. Like it will rub you dry. Fear of failing in fact, ask anybody who has succeeded. They have failed more than they have succeeded. Do you know why? Because failure helps you to work on that thing until you get it. And when you get it, nobody can tell you shit because you have mastered this thing. So don't let failure rob you from getting wealthy, right? The 10th point, and of course, not the least in any way, is limiting beliefs and deep-seated beliefs about money. I think I've talked this in a bit, you know, um, before. But this works in a way that you just believe that money is hard to make. So whatever seems like open a piggy vest account, for instance, put in this amount of money and immediately get an interest of 2%, you feel like it's too good to be true. You don't want to try it. You just believe that it's not true. In fact, you argue it with your friends like, you know, it's not possible. I have been told and I know that money is not easy to be made. Guy, you are sitting on a moving Okada. Mm? You have been left behind. So, please, think about what you're thinking about money again. Think about it. And join the clique. Let's level up on these things. So, these are the 10 things I thought to share with you. Which of them do you think you need to deal with? Tell me in the comment section. Which of them do you think you have overcome? Which? You know, let's talk about it further in the comment section. And, of course, I'm coming your way again with a very mind-blowing video don't miss it don't miss it and if you haven't subscribed why you don't like money is there a trauma around it subscription is free yes so see you on the other side join the Chi money gang by just subscribing right here and please give this video a thumbs up it will help youtube to send to help me for you it will help youtube it will help for YouTube to send it to more people who are also, you know, seekers of wealth so that they can also enjoy what we enjoy. What are brothers for? What are friends for? Right? But to, to share opportunities. All right. So thank you so much. And I'll come to you again pretty soon, right now, almost right now. What am I even saying? Anyway, see you. <laughs> Bye.